Next is a young man who's been in this battle a long time too. One that really needs no introduction. He's known throughout the civil rights area, era for a long, long time. Mr. Timuel Black. Thank you very much, and it is an honor beyond comprehension to have this opportunity to say thank you, Quint. I first met him in 1960, and he was a person who was a continuation of the dreams that some of us have had most of our lives. You see, I was born in Birmingham, Alabama, December 7th, 1918. And <laughs> when I was eight months old at that time in Birmingham, I said to my mother and daddy, shit, I'm leaving here. <laughs> But we came to Chicago and we found that those things were somewhat different. They were not that different, you see. Frederick Douglass said, power yields nothing but to a demand. It never has and it never will. We may not get all that we pay for in this world, but we shall surely pay for all we get. Now, I was in World War II, I'm gonna cut it very short, I'm not gonna be elaborate because I don't know that much to be elaborate. I was in World War II after having experienced the segregation, the discrimination in health and many other areas in the south side of Chicago. Having been confined to perhaps one hospital, Providence Hospital, where black doctors who were trained, regardless of their training, who could only get internships and residences, generally at Providence Hospital. That was something that was, they were efficient. But when I first met Quint in 1960, I believe it was, he and others, like himself, had formed an organization whose, whose name I can't remember right now, but they, I became a part of that group. And they began to break the barriers. Even at the University of Chicago, that was discrimination, regardless to your economic or your social status. That was discrimination. Many black women going to lying in hospital didn't know they were being discriminated against. Now, when I left World War II, and I'm gonna quit very quickly at this point, after seeing being in four major battles and seeing Buchenwald and realizing what other human beings could do to other human beings if those other human beings didn't have control of their resources, I returned to the United States of America, along with many others, that we would make this a better world. But then we had to look for the kinds of people who would help us make this a better world. And I think in the early 50s, there were people like Quentin, because I didn't meet Quentin until later, but I knew he had participated in those early days of the struggle. And then in the 60s, in the civil rights movement in the South, Quentin Young organized a health unit of the civil rights movement in Mississippi and Alabama and all those other places. Many people may not understand that, but the contributions he made didn't have to. See, I measure people not by what they may do necessarily, that's good. But what they didn't have to do, 
Dr. King didn't have to do what he did. He could have benefited just as well. And many others like him across the world. Quentin Young on our local level and national level exemplifies what you don't have to do, but what you ought to do. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Black. At 90 years old, 90 years old, 